Hey, Karis family. Uh, I'm Caleb. I'm Karina. We're the babies. We uh, have been a part of Karis since early 2014, so over six years. Uh, we live in Madrid, Spain. We moved here in October um, working with uh, the IMB, which is a, a board that helps, um, helps send members of, of Southern Baptist churches across the world to bring uh, good news to people. And so we've been um, starting that process over the last six, seven months. Um, but a couple months ago, um, uh, we obviously ran into to some of the same things that uh, you all are experiencing now in the States as well. And so we just wanted to take a few minutes and, and share. Um, we've had the privilege of seeing how life is going for some of you uh, through some of these video updates and uh, just wanted to share a little bit of what's going on in our lives. Right, so at the beginning of this pandemic and our <coughs> mandated quarantine, um, I think it really came at a really good time for us. Uh, we had kind of been going, going, going for, yeah, for like a long time. A long time. We were going through seminary and yeah. the, um, we're both natural introverts, and so we have just been <sighs> meeting new people, moving to a new city, joining a new team, and um, so six months in, we were pretty tired, and so um, while there's um, a lot of pain and a lot of suffering in our city, we're, we're in one of the hardest hit cities in the world as far as the, the coronavirus death toll and uh, infection rate. We, um, we were grieved by that, but at the same time, a little bit relieved to have a little bit of time in our house. Yeah. Um, with our family to, to reconnect, to rest, to reestablish some rhythms of, of Healthy routine. spiritual disciplines and sleep and, and eating and exercise and, and things like that. Um, for us, um, uh, six, seven weeks ago, um, our quarantine looked like we, we were um, stuck inside our, our apartment. Um, here in Madrid, uh, Karina would once a week. Karina to do would go out once a week mm -hmm. to do grocery shopping at the nearest grocery store. But the girls, uh, we've got two two girls, uh, two and four years old, and the girls weren't able to go outside. Uh, our apartment overlooks the, a local playground, and so every day they would stare out the window mm -hmm. and ask <laughs> to go outside. But um, 40, 43 days in, they they let us. Yeah. Uh, take them out and that was such a huge relief and and that was last week I think or two we've been going out for walks almost for two weeks now at this point and it's yeah. been a, a game, game changer, changer. Yeah. For sure. they're sleeping better um, they're more independent in the day which is helpful because I think one of the difficulties with um, this situation is that you know we have responsibilities that we have to do throughout the day um, but when we're trying to do them with the girls here at home, it can be complicated. Uh, lots of interruptions, not very focused yeah. time. Uh, so, yeah. So going out for walks has definitely, I think, changed a little bit their ability to play independently and to get some energy out, um, help, which helps us be able to focus a little bit more on the tasks that we are assigned to do. Mm -hmm. Language, so so yeah. So I, I was in language school before uh, this started. So going every day to class and learning Spanish. Um, when when we got quarantined or right before the quarantine started, my language school shut down, and so um, I've been kind of self studying, which has been good. Especially at first, it was good because I was able to hey this this is what I need to go firm up. This is what I need to study. Mm -hmm. um, and so man, the first couple of weeks. I spent a ton of time studying, but then uh, more recently it's been, okay, now I need to get back to conversing with people and, yeah. and, and using what I've learned so that I can uh, keep it up. So that's been a, a bit of a difficulty. We've, you know, made, made use of video conferencing and things like that and, and talking to different people, but um, it's not just like your work meetings or your meetings with your teachers that uh, the kids are having when the video freezes up, it's, it's hard to understand even in English and even more so <laughs> it's difficult in Spanish it's um, sometimes difficult so uh, that's been a, a bit of a struggle since that's kind of our first first job or my first mm -hmm. job and so um, that would be um, probably something we'll ask for for prayer for in a little bit 
but I think the Lord has been super encouraging to yeah. me um, in, well, first of all, in, in just having more time in the mornings to, uh, to, to read scripture, to pray, and um, just have time for, for some more spiritual disciplines. And then also he's been, he's been more than gracious to us in um, helping us connect with, with some of our neighbors. So obviously right. at the beginning. So, yeah. So for, for me, like it changed a lot because I was, I felt like I was actually making some progress with getting to know the moms in Miriam's class. And, um, the last few weeks before the quarantine, they had started inviting me to go to certain parks because sometimes, well, we usually would just go to the park in front of our house, but I guess they kind of rotate a little bit, which I didn't realize they did that. So, and they had started kind of like inviting me to go along with them. And I felt like I was finally like gaining some traction there. Um, but then of course with this, now I haven't seen them for months at this point. And so we'll still text a little bit and Miriam has actually even had some video calls with some, some of her classmates, which has been good. Um, but I, you know, it's a little discouraging to think of like where I could be if it hadn't been for the pandemic at this point with, uh, the moms in her class. Um, but on the flip side, um, we could never have imagined the connections that we've made this, these past weeks with our neighbors, mm -hmm. like in any other scenario. <laughs> and it's, and it's, uh, there's a neighborhood texting group that, um, we were invited and put on and it's really helped us to connect with our neighbors. One of our neighbors had a cardiac arrest, um, ended up in the hospital unconscious and I texted his wife and was like, Hey, I just want you to know that we're praying for you. Like you, you don't know me. And she responded by saying, Oh, we know exactly who you are because Caleb and I have been able to sing songs to our neighbors on Sundays. And so apparently our neighbors kind of know us now, which is amazing. Some neighbor stopped you the other yeah, day on the street. Yeah, yesterday, uh, yeah. my dad stopped me and, and said, hey, we don't know each other, but, you know, I'm Carlos. And I said, oh, I'm Caleb. Nice to meet you. And um, and so, yeah, most of you probably have heard the story of, of what um, what the Lord did on, on Easter and let us sing a song uh, out our window. Um, and and we, they've, our neighbors have asked us to continue to sing songs to them on Sundays. And so we've been singing songs with gospel themes and we've just been able to, to really um, pretty explicitly proclaim the gospel through song, mm -hmm. um, which uh, we never saw that opportunity coming. And, and there's just so many ways that the Lord has brought that together. And then and just the way that um, we've met, just met so many neighbors mm -hmm. and gotten close to our next door neighbor. Mm -hmm. you know, we had been here four or five months and had talk to our neighbor a couple times yeah. but now it's several times a week that we're yeah. in contact with her over messages and um and seeing her and, and they've invited us into to their their lives and into their family which is so rare mm -hmm. uh here in spain so we're, we're thankful for the ways that god has opened uh, opportunities for the gospel and um and we're, we're doing our best to be faithful to what he's called us to so <clears throat> is there anything else we wanted to add as far as it's kind of a mix of, yeah, and there's some good, there's some bad. At, you know, we said at the beginning it was nice to have a, a rest, but we're kind of ready to get back out there. Even yeah. as introverts, we're ready to, like, be able to see other people. Yeah. Um, and that seems like it's still a good month away at least before we're able to meet up. But, um, like, my coffee shop that I go to opened up yesterday. The barber shop did. So we're, we're able to start going out little by little by little. So just pray for that, um, that we would be able to um, see an easing of some of these restrictions, but also pray for um, our city. Um, there's still hundreds of people dying from the virus every day in Madrid, um, more people than, than, than they, they can even handle in a lot of ways. And so just pray for our city, um, that the Lord would provide relief and then pray also that we would continue to have opportunities to share the hope that we have even in the midst of this pandemic, um, not just on a, a broad scale to our neighbors um, out of our windows, but that we would be able to have opportunities to follow up with the people we know and, yeah. and, and share God's hope. Um, and then lastly, just to praise, we're, we're super thankful that um, the, the churches that support us being here have continued to, to give faithfully. Um, the Lord has continued to provide so that we're able to stay here and be a faithful presence in the midst of this pandemic and 
and we know that you guys um, at Karis participate in that. And so thank you so much for all you're doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just praise God for uh, the thousands and thousands and thousands of believers across the states that are continuing to give sacrificially during these times and um, make our job possible. Mm-hmm. So we thank you and we, we love you guys. Yep. Thank you.